Hey everybody, it's Ripley again. Hope you guys are having a good day today. Um, we're going to talk about right triangles trigonometry and its applications. That's supposed to be an N, not a R or I S. I know my handwriting is awful, especially on this tablet, but sorry about that. Okay, so let's let's not futz around. Let's take the first quadrant of the unit circle, or excuse me, of any circle of radius R. And let's think about this. All right, so badly drawn, of course. So if I pick any point x, comma, y, right, and I bring a radius out to that, right? Now think about this. If this is my angle theta, what do we know that sine of theta is from before? Well, it's, it's y over r, right? And what do we know that cosine of theta is? This is x over r. We proved this using similar figures with, uh, with the unit circle way back when, right? And we also know that tangent of theta is equal to y over x. It's actually known as sine of the cos, right? Now, we're going to take that information and we're going to put it to general use in more of a geometric context, all right? So before, we were talking about a coordinate plane or a coordinate geometry context, and now we're going to talk about it in, in more of a geometric context. So think about this triangle. It's going to be a right triangle for now. Now, down the road, we'll get into, into different kinds of, of um, triangles, but for now, we're going to think about this triangle. Now, I'm going to find an angle, and I'm going to call this one theta. Now, th where I locate theta is very important because then the definitions of the sides change. Remember words like hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. All right. As far as this angle is concerned, this side, this side, now it looks more like a right triangle, but I don't know what's going on with this extra thing. Sorry. Is the adjacent side. Adjacent just means next to. Now you may say, well, Ripley, what about this side? Why isn't this the adjacent side? Well, because that's a really special side. It, the, the side opposite the right angle is always referred to as the hypotenuse. Hi, whoops, sorry. Hypotenuse. And then, of course, this side right here, since it's opposite, it's across the triangle from the angle, it's called the opposite. All right, now you may say, well, why, why did you set it up like that? Well, watch. I'm going to generalize this coordinate geometry situation to just a geometry geometry situation. If the sine of theta is y over r, then the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, right? How about the cosine of theta? Well, that's just adjacent over hypotenuse. And then the tangent of theta, excuse me, is uh, what? Opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite over adjacent. There's a mnemonic device that you can use to remember these things, okay? And it's so, ka, you got to say it ridiculous like you're from some weird Pacific island. Toa. All right, so katoa. So katoa will get you where you need to be with right triangle trigonometry. Okay, now let me show you why finding, why designating your angle is really, really important. If you don't designate your angle, watch what happens. So if that's theta and I call this one alpha, notice that when I'm talking about this angle, it's really important to orient yourself as far as your right triangle is concerned. When I'm talking about this angle, this is not the opposite side anymore. Now this is the adjacent side. This is not the adjacent side. Remember, this was adjacent to theta. Now this is the opposite. The nice thing is that the hypotenuse always stays consistent. All right, really easy to show this in the geometric context. Now, watch how easy it is to use this information to solve some really basic problems that we can use all over the place. All right, um, I've got a ladder. Let's say that I've got a ladder leaning against a wall. Okay, and I know that the ladder is 20 feet long. Okay, and I know that the angle that it makes with the ground, for whatever reason, I know that the angle that it makes with the ground, what's that look like, about 20 degrees? The nice thing about doing geometry with trig is that often the angles, rather than being in radians, which can be kind of confusing and difficult to wrap your brain around, <clears throat> they're typically in degrees, but not always. Excuse me. Okay, you ready? Um, I want to know how high up the wall, so let's call this the height. I want to know how high up the wall this ladder is touching. And I also want to know the distance from the base of the wall that the base of the ladder is. Now, I'm going to solve this a whole bunch of different ways, okay? First things first, ooh, what I, well, what we'll do is we'll plug it in, and then I'll, I'll bring up my, my calculator here in just a second. First things first, look, now let's orient ourselves. 
So here's the angle right here. All right. Now I'll maybe I'll change colors real quick. Now remember, this is the height, this is the adjacent, and this is the opposite. Now you don't have to do this, but it's not a bad idea not to. Okay. All right. So here we go. Do, let's look close. Which one of the trig ratio deals with opposite and hypotenuse? Now. Why am I using opposite and hypotenuse? Well, because I know what the hypotenuse is, and I'm looking for the opposite, and I have an angle. So I stumble over here, opposite, hey, look at that, opposite hypotenuse. So I know I can solve this problem by saying the sine of 20 degrees is equal to h over 20 feet. That's funny, I got 20s all over the place, it doesn't matter. So in a puff of algebra, this is just a simple algebraic problem now, I got 20 sine of 20 degrees, right? Which is just pi ninths if I want to keep it in, in radians. Okay? Now, that's a number. Now, I will tell you right now, which I'll prove here in a sec with my calculator. Excuse me. That's a number. It's an ugly number. So, when I use my calculator and I spit out this number, it's going to have ugly decimals and things like that. It's not going to be like 14. We wish that it were, but it's not. Okay? So, when I go to solve for this adjacent side, I'm going to call this x, because, I don't know, for lack of a better word, right? So now let's think about this. I can do this, once I've solved for the opposite side, I can do this lots of ways. But I'm going to try and get you in a way that you won't run into rounding errors and you won't end up with numbers where you rounded them and now your numbers have drifted too much because you can make numbers drift if you round too many times, if you round on top of rounding on top of rounding. Excuse me, you guys. Okay, so think about this. I want to solve for x. There are lots of ways to do this. I, it, once I know h, I can simply use Pythagorean's theorem, right? c squared equals b squared plus a squared, right? Once this thing is a number, which we'll get to in just a sec. I like to do it without it being a number first. I don't want it to distract. Or here's an easier way. Can't I just use right triangle trigonometry again? Only now, I need a ratio with adjacent and hypotenuse. So I scroll down. Let's see, opposite adjacent, that one doesn't, oh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, I'm orienting myself, right, as far as this 20 degrees is concerned. This is adjacent, and that's hypotenuse. And that has to do with cosine. So I'm going to go cosine of 20 degrees is equal to x over 20, right? So x equals 20 cos. 20 degrees. I could have used better degrees, but that's all. Right. We're fine. Okay, now I'm going to show you on the calculator um, what these numbers are going to be, and then we'll play a little bit, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and stick these in our calculator and see what happens. Now, be careful, okay? Let's go to our mode. Oh, now we're in degree, so i got to get rid of radians. Otherwise, really strange things happen. So I'm going to leave this thing in radians, all right? And I'm just going to plug it in. You ready? So second, quit. And I'm going to go, what do we got? Well, I've got 20 sine of 20. I'm going to hit enter. Let's see, 6.8 feet, it appears. Now, that gets us, you know what? I'm going to escape out of this so I can do both of these at the same time. All right? Now, this puts us in an interesting quandary. What am I going to round to? Well, generally, for AP, we round to thousands, but thousands can be a pain in the butt to work with, but I'm going to stay consistent and round to thousands, even though in this case, I'm not going to include the zero. I'll just stay with sig figs on that one. Whoops. This should be 6.84. All right. That's 20 sine 20. Now, let's prove a few things after I get this one done. All right. Now I got to go 20 cos 20. All right. And I hit enter, and I get 18 Let's see, I want to make sure I put this thing in the right place. So I'm going to get 18.794. Okay, nice, right? Now, some of you may have seen, let's see if you saw this. Once I have 6.84, if I wanted to, watch this. And I'm not trying to convolute things. I'm not trying to confuse these things for you. If I wanted to, notice if I didn't want to use the hypotenuse for whatever reason. But if I want to use a ratio. Let's make this guy bigger. If I want to use a ratio that deals with opposite and adjacent, can't I use tangent? I could use tangent, right? Opposite over adjacent. Let's see what that would look like. I know that the tangent of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite, which we had just solved as 6.84 divided by x. In a puff of algebra, 
x equals 6.84 divided by the tangent of 20 degrees, right? Let's see what that is. I better get really close to this. And if I'm not, I better be, be able to explain why. Let's check. So if I stumble back over here, I got 6.84 divided by tangent of 20 degrees. And let's see what we get. Hey, look at that. It's pretty close. It's really close. But look, why are we off? This is approximate, right? Because I'm rounding. I suppose I should do approximate here and approximate here because I'm rounding. And this is 18.793. Why? Well, because I had to round this guy. So I'm off a little bit. Notice that my accuracy has drifted. Another way that I could have done it, and I'm, I, promise this is the, <laughs> I promise this is the last way. Another way that I could have done it is I could have said, okay, I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared per Pythagoras, right? And I was solving for x, right? So that's going to be x squared plus, what, 6.84 squared equals 20 squared. So x equals the square root of 20 squared minus 6.84 squared. And let's see what that is. So I stumble back over here. I'm going to go second square root of. So there's lots of ways to do this. Whatever you're comfortable with, stick with that and then try and, and you know, drift out a little bit. Try and expand a little bit. All right, minus. Oh, wait, I don't want that. Go back, go back. All right, minus. Uh, 6.84 squared, and then we'll get out of there. And I'm going to clear that. Uh, clear that. Oh, wait. Oh, really? Second entry. Let's see if it gives it to me. Crud. Sorry, you guys. I, I don't like this new platform. Clear. Okay, second. Square root. Well, you get to see me flail around. It's at 20 squared minus. It's always good to see your instructor blow it once or twice. And there we go. Enter. 18.794. So this is approximately 18.794. So that actually gets us closer to the to this rounded value that we got here. Okay. All right. Let's do some more. I'll leave this over here because we're going to be popping back and forth. New page.